Hello. In this video, I'm going to o give an overview of constrained optimization. This is the technique of the Lagrangian method of utility maximization. Uh, this is going to be the classic problem where, say, a consumer has a utility function over good x and good y. The consumer wants to find the optimal number of units of good x and good y to consume, given that the consumer has a limited budget. So let's try to solve this type of problem. So let's suppose that this consumer has a utility function where u equals x times y. x and y just represent quantities of good x and good y respectively. The consumer has a limited budget. We're going to assume that this consumer has $6 to spend on good x and good y. Good x has a price of $1. That's just a coefficient in front of x and good y has a price of one dollar in this example. Again, it's just represented by the coefficient in front of variable y. So our goal here is to get u, the utility function, which is expressed again as x times y, as big as possible, subject to the constraint or limitation that the values of x and y obey the budget constraint. In our case, obeying the budget constraint means that when we add the number of units of good x that we purchase plus the number of units of good y that we purchase, they must sum to 6. So when added together, x plus y must equal 6. So let's first try to maybe solve this problem uh, just through a trial and error method. So here's a table. x just represents the number of goods of uh, good x that this consumer may purchase y represents the number of goods y that this consumer may purchase and then we have the utility function and then I have the constraint over here so for example if this consumer were to purchase one good of x and one uh, unit of good y the consumers utility be, would be one times five or just five notice that this does obey the constraint okay the consumer doesn't spend more than six dollars here so five plus one equals 6. However, what we're interested in is not just obeying the constraint, but getting the u value as, as large as possible. So it, perhaps there's another combination of good x and good y that could, con could give the consumer an even larger amount of utility and still obey the constraint. So here's another possibility. The consumer could buy two units of good x and four units of good y. So when we plug those values into the utility function, we're going to get 2 times 4, or 8. So this is better yet. Uh, the consumer is getting more utility. Uh, the consumer is still obeying the constraint. So uh, this, this is an improvement. Can we do better? Well, let's plug in 3 for x and 3 for y. Plugging that into the utility function, the consumer gets 9 units of satisfaction. The consumer is also obeying the constraint by not spending more than $6. So perhaps this is the best the consumer could do. Let's try a, another possibility. Let's try three units of good x and four units of good y. We plug those values into the utility function. The consumer gets 12 units of satisfaction. This is more than nine, but here's the problem. The consumer doesn't have the income to buy this market basket of goods. 3 plus 4 is seven dollars of spending in our example. The consumer only has six dollars. So that's no good. Uh, we could try some other combinations here, buying two and a half units of good x, three and a half units of good y. In that case, plugging those values in the utility function, consumer gets 8.75 units of satisfaction. Uh, this does obey the constraint, but we see that the consumer is better off with three and three. So this gives you an idea what constrained optimization is all about. We're trying to get the, the, the biggest value for our objective function as possible, in this case our utility function, some, uh, subject to some constraint. Now let me show you this uh, using the Lagrangian method. We're going to come to the same conclusion. 3 and 3 is the optimal consumption bundle for this consumer. Okay, um, so here's our utility function u equals x times y, and our constraint. Consumer has $6, price of good x is $1, price of good y is $1. We're going to set up the Lagrangian. 
and we're going to write it like this. So this is our objective function, the thing we're trying to maximize, or in some Lagrangian problems, it'd be the thing you're maybe trying to minimize. Then we're going to say plus lambda. Okay, lambda just a Greek letter here. And what we're going to put here in brackets is just a constraint. And the way I'm going to plug in the constraint is as follows. So here's our budget constraint, and all I'm doing is taking everything on the right-hand side, all these variables on the right-hand side, and I'm moving, over, moving them over to the left-hand side. Okay, so essentially what we're plugging in here okay, is an equation that equals zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to maximize this subject to the constraint, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to take three partial derivatives. Okay, in, in no particular order, the first partial derivative we'll take is the partial derivative of the Lagrangian equation with respect to good x. When we do that, we're going to get y, okay, that falls out of this part here, and then we're going to get minus uh, lambda. We need to set that partial derivative equal to zero. If you want, before you take the partial derivatives, you know, feel, feel free to multiply this lambda through by what's in brackets. Okay, so you can write, just write it down here. Okay. Let me just rewrite this over here then. So if you want to do that before you take your partial, der partial derivatives, that's fine. Might make it a little bit easier for you. So this minus lambda is just coming from the partial derivative of minus lambda times y. Just simplifies the minus lambda. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take the partial derivative of this expression with respect to y, good y, and we're going to get x minus lambda. We set that equal to zero too. Make sure you set that equal to zero. And I'll show you why in a, in a minute. And then the next expression is the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to lambda. And all you're going to do to get back here, this is easy, whatever's in brackets, just rewrite it. Okay, so what's ever in brackets when you're taking the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to lambda, you just rewrite that and set it equal to zero. So what we have now is really a, a, a three equation setup. It's got three variables, okay, and uh, three unknowns. So the way I like to solve this is as follows. Um, going back to equation one here, solve this for lambda. So you're going to get lambda equals y. I'm going to do the same thing for the second equation. Solve this for lambda. Lambda, oops, lambda equals x. And what we got here um, is lambda equals y and lambda equals x. So what's nice to do now is just set lambda equal to lambda. And let me go over here. Set both of these equations equal to one another. Lambda equals lambda, and we get y equals x. Okay, that's kind of neat. If you have slightly more complicated uh, objective functions, utility functions, uh, it's not going to maybe simplify as, as nice as what we have here. The next step is to plug this into our constraint. So here's our constraint, um, or our third equation, 6 minus x minus y. Go ahead and plug that in. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to place a y. Okay, so again, all I did here was I took our third equation and I plugged this result into our third equation. So where I uh, saw an x, I placed a y. Now I'm just going to simplify this. 2y equals 6. That implies that y equals 3. Okay. So this consumer wants to buy 3 units of good x. How many units of good y? Well, we could plug this value back into either the constraint or maybe simpler yet, we could plug it back into this equation, and you're going to see that y, um, um, oops, you're going to see that x equals 3. So if y is 3, x equals 3. Okay, let me go on to the next page. So we know that y equals x, so if y equals 3, 
that means that x equals 3. And so our optimal number of units of good y and good x in this case happen to be 3 and 3. And that's how you solve a constrained optimization problem. Uh, hope you found this helpful. So let me recap though. So to recap, our Lagrangian e e equation L is just going to equal the objective function, the utility function in our case, plus lambda times a constraint. So what we showed here was given our utility function is x times y, I'm going to plug that into a Lagrangian right here, plus lambda, again multiplied by the constraint. We're going to take three partial derivatives, setting each one of them equal to zero. So we've got equation one, two, and three here. And as I said uh, before, we're going to, perhaps the, the, you, you find this the, the easiest way to do this, solve the first two, two equations for lambda, okay, equation one and two, simplify them by solving them for lambda, then set the two lambda equations equal to one another, and simplify, either solving for y or x. Like I said, uh, some of the problems that you might uh, be exposed to, uh, there might be a few steps in order to simplify it down, that y equals some expression or x equals some expression. Then finally, once you have that, you're going to substitute th this, this equation into the third equation, and you're going to simplify it. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.